seemingly undepletable. Staggering volume by every definition. A textbook instance of when you need a lot of gun for a lot of bad guys. I think Bravo on this map is one of the worst. Correct! Hi, Six Snipes back at it again with the series about the least regarded class of weapons in Insurgency Sandstorm and quite possibly FPSs in general. Every day, I sense we get closer to another fucking rifleman gun. No, fuck! No! Father Hank. No, please! Fuck! <laughs> New World Interactive Development Team. <laughs> They're still going to pick Rifleman over Observer. <laughs> I said it in the last episode with the PKM, and I'll say it again today. We are going to look at the very best the Gunner class has to offer. Why are we still here? <laughs> this is the Saw, and you're watching Gun Guy. The M249 Squad Automatic Weapon, or rather simpler and acronymously known as the SAW, is the product of the M60 being too heavy and unreliable, as proven with extensive use in the war on tree hell. Ah, oh, got the trash can, burn barrel. Well, yeah, got the ammo in a bind. Whereas if weight was a concern with that one, let's say the M2 Browning is definitely also going to be what you call a problem as the only other solution for a squad automatic weapon at the time, or an extra M60 box is going to cause you back problems, the upper assembly of an M2 alone is going to paralyze you from the waist down. So naturally, faced with the overwhelming threat of weapons requiring any degree of finesse, the United States Marine Corps instead needed a weapon that's functionality was more suitable for the more primitively gifted minds of theirs standard infantry. Mistakes are fine, that's all that matters. Hey, 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 that's all that matters, man. Extensive government development entailing the United States basically telling a bunch of gun people to make something for them in the early 70s, where Colt took the highly creative method of another AR platform, H and K was in their phase where everything was kind of just a bigger MP5, and Fabrique National or Style actually taking the prompt seriously wiped the floor of the competition when given the option to develop a platform either magazine or belt fed and just laughed in their face and said choosing is for virgins. The result of the endeavors of whichever rocket scientist managed to create such a mechanism is the iconic machine gun, originally named the FN Mini Me. Mini Me. French for mini machine gun, <laughs> pertaining to its usage by a singular individual, unlike previous squad automatic weapons being relatively large, and the US government experimental title project XM249, chambered in 556, almost, almost 6, six millimeter, millimeter for some, some stupid, stupid, stupid reason, reason, and capable of feeding from either 200 round box magazine or from the stay nag insert, albeit less reliably, without any form of reassembly. Unlike the M60, it is also famously durable as hell. More powerful than an M16 per shot and with the ammo capacity of the infamous pig of Vietnam, you have what boils down to the formula for one of if not the most prolific machine gun of all time. But does it translate into the g Yes. Let's get real here for a minute, it doesn't matter what stats you assign to a weapon, anything that's packing 200 bullets of any variety whatsoever in squad automatic format is going to get a thumbs up from me. This thing could be chambered in 45 ACP or whatever dog shit the ass val has, and I'm still telling you to use it at 740 rounds per minute, that's pretty much on the dot to what an M4 does, and the actual caliber is what the M4 takes too, with nearly identical shot performance to boot, and absolutely jaw dropping 5 meters per second faster and a gobsmacking two whole more penetration. <laughs> Jokes aside, this thing sure isn't one that velocity nets you literal hit scan performance well beyond when you'd expect it, making this far more efficient at ranges than weapons like the PKM with their heavier bullets with albeit more damage and penetration. And you can stand on your soapbox or bombed out technical of choice and talk to me about how caliber performance beyond precision, but I'll be having problems hearing you over 200 rounds of 556 <laughs> As far as options go, much like the PKM, you have so little and as a result can take so much. There's no option for ammunition extensions because you you don't you don't need one, nor is any ability to have a foregrip and instead opts for the default bipod, which is a bit of a missed opportunity if you ask me, because you know, recoil grips would be kinda sick, but I digress. Really, the only thing you actually need is an optic to prevent you from not seeing an entire attack vector hiding behind the iron sight block that's larger than my score on the spectrum. The scopes are good, particularly for this one, just because that range is stupid good. Another thing I'd take is a flash hider. Compensators are overkill as the recoil 
recoil even from a standing position is super manageable given practice and you'll really be using that bipod half the time anyway and the suppressor and domination is hilarious as I'm pretty sure the muzzle would double as a plasma cutter given a 200 round burst through any can thrown on this thing in real life. It would also be way too long and clumsy to make this functional within a close quarters potential which is in earnest actually pretty well beyond what you'd expect for something labeled machine gun but there you go. That M4 grade fire rate and rifle penetration actually makes for quite a decent room defense against bots and human bots alike and the capacity makes it so reloading is a rare occasion. Just bring a pistol with those extra credits just in case. Ultimately, this one's a lot simpler than pretty much any other pick ever, and in my humble factual assertion is indisputably the best out of any of your options as a gunner. You can cry about 1000 rounds per minute or world war bullshittery, but I have 200 bullets before any reload and twice the credits to spend on shit like carriers, armor, grenades, and the secondary that really comes in handy while your ass still has to b -b -b buy a triple digit capacity like a stupid virgin orphan shitterhead. Alright, I like to run Flash Hydra and ACOG with laser because that's pretty much the picture of what they use this thing in its early deployment in the 80s, and afterwards I can still afford smokes to make sure the other gunners can't have fun, or else pack the cheaper holographic for closer maps like Gap. And grenades for an objective defenders need to get reminded that pistol calibers and higher rate of fire don't matter when I can just pre-fire exactly every position. Overall, the M249 is just the goaded tier pick which I'll tell you to use over any other MG on the market until ideally NWI decides to add a machine gun next update because that is the most obvious, balanced, and anticipated addition to this game since the arrival of night modes. Hundreds and hundreds of lonely, sad gunners are counting on you New World Interactive. Please. Please, please make the right choice. We have not new guns since the beta. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the M249. Sturdy, rugged, and proof that power can be achieved in sheer quantity. The next one's the obvious pick that's already been mentioned in this video, that is the Grim Reaper of Normandy and quite possibly responsible for even more deaths on Crossing alone. But until then, I made this great video battling about armor in the Battlefield 4 campaign character tier hierarchy which I recommend you check out. Otherwise, if your attention span like mine won't tolerate long form videos, I'm Six Snipes. This is Gun Guide. And I'll see you out there in Sandstorm. And I'm gonna have a lot more bullets than you mother you just try to run all the way around on that one?